Today on Earth Focus, the first underwater exploration of the Bering Sea Canyons discovers new marine life. Can these vital areas be protected? Coming up on Earth Focus. The Bering Sea. While it may seem treacherous above the surface, deep beneath the waves, life is teeming. The Bering Sea Canyons are the largest underwater canyons in the world. They're larger than the Grand Canyon. They're also right in the middle of these waters between Alaska and Russia. Scientists have dubbed the Green Belt because it's so incredibly productive. And as you can imagine, it draws all kinds of wildlife, sea life. This also creates an exceptional opportunity for commercial fishing. It's a billion dollar fishery. This is where we catch more than half of our fish in the United States of America. Such reward may lead to detrimental consequences. That's why an elite team of researchers and submarine divers are taking to the water to explore the canyons for the very first time. Their destination, Zemchug and Pribilov Canyons, two of the largest underwater canyons in the world. We had an opportunity to do first-hand research in a real exploration of these canyons. No one had ever been down in, in a submarine, ever. When we first said that we were going out to do this research, we heard a lot, especially from the fishing industry. You know, there's nothing down there but mud and silt. It's flat, it's boring, it's dark. So we really didn't know what to expect. And I never would have expected to see the amount of life and color. As we sunk down further and deeper and deeper into the ocean, it was like an amazing light show. Phosphorescent life with um, rainbow lights swirling around them and squid darting past us and coming in to see who we were and what we were. And then eventually settling in in a, a, just a school of bright orange rockfish. We found 16 species of deep sea corals, many of which there were no previous record of for the Bering Sea at all. We documented over 20 species of sponge, including a new species. We discovered a species of sponge that our colleagues in the Pripyloff Islands, the Aleuts, called Aptos Kanoch, after their word for heart. And they wanted to show people the canyons are the heart of the Bering Sea. Despite this abundance of life, the scars of fishing were still visible. When we went down this past summer, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were looking in the fishable depths. What does it look like where we know trawl nets and, and long lines and fishing gear have actually been fishing in that depth range? And as it turned out, we saw many more instances of damage to the seafloor. Trawl scars that went on likely for miles and miles Especially sensitive to this damage are deep sea coral and sponges, which create essential living habitats, including nursery areas, feeding grounds, and spawning zones for many deep sea organisms. We were able to show that corals and sponges are being used as habitat by rockfish and several other kinds of fish down in the deep dark of the Bering Sea. So what's important to keep in mind is that if we're not protecting the habitat that sustains the fish, we may lose it all and that's not good for the ecosystem or the fishing industry. This idea of creating protections for the canyons is actually not new. Environmental organizations and members of the public have been petitioning decision makers for over a decade now. In 2006, a petition to protect the canyons was brought to the North Pacific Fishery Management Council, who manage fishing operations in Alaskan waters. But with no visual evidence that fishing was causing damage, the council chose not to restrict fishing until enough research had been collected. So we took this as an invitation, as a challenge. We actually did the research and exploration and got the data that the council said they needed to uh, make a decision. Those early images that have never been seen before have helped us hit a major milestone. In June, the North Pacific Fishery Management Council made a breakthrough in this campaign to protect the Bering Sea Canyons. They decided that we know enough to be able to 
identify the places that have these fragile coral and sponges creating habitat, and then it's time to move ahead with considerations to protect these areas. It's a breakthrough. And one of the things I think that has been most influential for the council, because they tend to be dominated by fishing interests, is that seafood businesses are also asking them to take action. Supermarkets like Safeway, Super Value, Trader Joe's, Wegmans, Harris Teeter have all said, we think there's something here. We think the canyons are important. We think that for the future of our businesses, it's important to protect these kind of areas. We've removed 90% of the big fish from the ocean. We ate them. We use bigger boats with more powerful engines, bigger nets, travel farther out to sea, deeper waters. We move north and south. We're now fishing in the Arctic. We're fishing off of Antarctica. There's literally no place left to go for fish to hide. So at some point, you have to step back and say, okay, what can we do to reverse this trend? Our view is that we should be setting aside about 40% of each type of ecosystem as fully protected marine reserves. Marine reserves are federally protected bodies of water where no fishing is allowed. And that gives us the opportunity to protect biodiversity but also to rebuild fish populations and to the point where they can start to spill over and supply fish in surrounding areas as well. Inside marine reserves, we now know the fish grow bigger, more plentiful, they're more diverse. If we wanna reseed the Bering Sea and have an insurance policy for the future, marine reserves is the way to go. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.